This video is a review of the topics that we have covered this week. We have angles in parallel lines, angles in polygons, bearings, and real life graphs. Angles in parallel lines. We have two parallel lines here. They are marked with arrows. So these two lines run in exactly the same direction. And when we have a line that goes through parallel lines, it makes the exact same angles when it meets both the lines. So this 137 degrees angle that we've got here is going to be exactly the same as this angle here. They are corresponding angles. And we can also say that X is the same as this. These two green angles are corresponding angles. These two purple angles will be corresponding angles. And these two blue angles will be corresponding angles. The exact same angles where the line meets both of the parallel lines. So to answer this question, we could say that corresponding angles are equal. So that angle is 137. So corresponding angles are equal. And then we could say angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So x and 137 are on a straight line. So 180 take away 137 is 43 so x must be 43 degrees and angles on a straight line add to 180 degrees so that is all we need to give for our answer we could have answered it differently. We could have said, if I clear this, I'm going to answer it differently. So I could have said angles in a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So this one here is 43. And then I could have used alternate angles. And alternate angles are a Z shape. So these two angles here are alternate angles and alternate angles are always equal. So I could have said angles in a straight line add up to 180 and alternate angles are equal. And I'm going to answer it one more time differently again. I could have said opposite angles are equal. So two angles that are opposite each other, if they make an X shape, the two opposite angles are equal. So I could have said opposite angles are equal. And these two angles, so if you walk down one parallel line, along the straight line, and back up the other parallel line, you have turned 180 degrees. And they are called co-interior angles. So I could have said opposite angles are equal and co-interior angles add up to 180 degrees. So X must be 43. So there's many ways of answering it. It doesn't matter which one you pick as long as your reasons are right and your answers right. Question two. In question two, we've got two lines going through the parallel lines. So we can't get them mixed up. So this line with the 108 on is a line going through the parallel lines. So that will make the same angles at both of the lines. So 108 and this angle here are corresponding. So corresponding angles are equal.
and then angles in a straight line add up to 180 degrees so 180 take away 108 is 72 so angles on a straight line add to 180 degrees then we can say that opposite angles are equal or vertically opposite angles are equal opposite angles are equal and finally angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees so we've got 54 and 72 so far 54 and 72 make 126 degrees 180 minus 126 is going to be 54 degrees so we have x equals 54 degrees and one more reason is angles in a triangle so angles in a triangle add to 180 degrees so x is 54 degrees and we could be asked what type of triangle this is and that would be an isosceles triangle so two equal angles makes it an isosceles triangle angles in polygons question one we're being asked to find the size of angle x and we have a five-sided shape so a pentagon a five-sided shape what do angles in a pentagon add up to so to find the sum of the angles in a polygon we can take the number of sides minus 2 and then times 180 so for a pentagon 5 minus 2 is 3 so 3 times 180 and that is 540 so the angles need to add up to 540 let's see what we've got so far so 140, 138, 75 and 74. 4 plus 5 plus 8 is 17. 7 plus 3 is 10, plus 7 is 17, plus 4 is 21, plus 1 is 22. And 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 4. So we've got 427 degrees. We need 540. So we need 113 more. So X is 113 degrees. Question two, work out the size of each exterior angle in a regular octagon. So let's grab an octagon. So here is a regular octagon and an exterior angle is on a straight line with an interior angle and exterior angles always add up to 360 degrees. So if you added up all of these angles, so all of these angles in here, you would get 360 degrees. They go the whole way around the shape. They make 360. So 360 divided by eight angles is the same as 180 over four or 90 over two which is 45 degrees. Question two, or part B, work out the size of an interior angle in a regular octagon. So a 
interior angle and an exterior angle are on a straight line. So 180 take away 45 is 135 degrees. So every angle in the regular octagon is 135 degrees. Every angle in a regular octagon or every angle in a regular shape is the same. Regular shapes have the same angles. All the angles are equal and all the lengths are equal. So they are all 135 degrees. Bearings. Bearings are angles that are measured from north clockwise. So an angle measured clockwise from north and we give them as three figures. So we don't write 64 degrees. We put a zero in front of the 64. So there will always be three figures. Question one says the bearing of B from A. So going from A to B is 64 degrees. Find the bearing of A from B. So if let's draw this, draw this on. So if we're at A and we go to B, it's 64 degrees from north. So if we draw north lines here and join them up. So we have going from A to B in a clockwise direction. 64 degrees. We need to find the bearing of A from B. So if we're at B, we're going from B and we measure from north in a clockwise direction. So we want this angle here. How can we find it? We can use co-interior angles. So these two north lines are parallel lines. So if you walk down one north line, along the straight line, and then up the other one, you would have turned around 180 degrees. So we can say that the angle in here is 180 take away 64, which is 116 degrees. And then we can say angles around the point Add up to 360, so 360 take away 116 is 244 degrees. So that's our answer. That is the bearing of A from B. So you measured from north in a clockwise direction. Question two. So we've got a diagram drawn. We're given a 97 degree angle. That's not a bearing. It's not measured clockwise from north. It's not given in three figures. It's just information to help us answer the question. Part A is asking for the bearing of B from A. So from A and it's clockwise from north. So it's this angle here. We can use co-interior angles. Co-interior angles add up to 180 degrees. So 180 take away 97 is 83. So it's 83 degrees, but we have to give our answer as a bearing. So we write a zero in front of the 83. Part B. Find the bearing of A from B. So we're at B. We're measuring from north in a clockwise direction. And we can use angles around the point. Add up to 360 degrees. So 360 take away 97 is 263 degrees. So that's our answer. And a distance time graph. Dave left home at 
2 o'clock, 1400, and drove to a park 30 miles away. So he left home here. He was at home, so zero, zero miles away from home. He went to a park 30 miles away. He arrived at 1445. So 1445, he was 30 miles away from home. He stayed for one hour. So he's going to stay 30 miles away for one hour. So that would be to 1545. Then drove home, arriving home at 16.45. So he'll be zero miles away. He'll be at home at 16.45. So draw a distance time graph. So let's connect these points. And that will be our distance time graph. Part B says calculate Dave's average speed in miles per hour for his journey to the park. So the speed is the gradient of the line, so how steep it is. Or we can say that speed is equal to distance divided by time. Speed is distance over time. So on the way to the park, he went 30 miles. So that's the distance in, it was 45 minutes. So 30 miles in 45 minutes. We want miles per hour. So we can change 45 minutes into hours. So 45 minutes is three quarters of an hour. So let's say 30 over either three quarters or 0 0.75. How can I divide this? So I want to get rid of the fraction really, get rid of the decimal, sorry. So if I double top and bottom, I'll have 60 over 1.5 and double it again 120 over 3 and 120 over 3 is 40 so it's 40 miles per hour we could have also used the time button on the calculator so 30 miles in 45 minutes so that's zero hours, 45 minutes, and that is 40, so 40 miles an hour. So that was our review. There's an assessment now available. The link will be in the description or at the bottom of the page if you're watching on the website.